Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this time I'm going to do a Dendrobium Orchid. Um, there are a lot of different kinds of orchids that uh, that you can do. and I thought I'd show you something a little bit different since I've already done a Symbidium and a Phalaenopsis Orchid. So let's get on with it. Right, so first of all, these are the cutters that I'm going to use for making the Dendrobium Orchid. I have got some veiners here as well um, that I'm going to use. These are Great Impression veiners. I'm only going to use three of the veiners out, out of it, I should say. That's including the two halves, I should say. There is another one, but it's a bit awkward to use, and I haven't mastered using it yet, because a lot of the veiners don't come with instructions with them on how to do it. So I'm doing it my way, rather than that way. So, I'm just going to move these all out of the way to start off with. And first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make the column. Now, there are two different kinds of columns that you can have. The, you can do it that way, which is the platonically correct way of doing it, or you can do it this way, the same as most other orchids are, just a uh, hell of a lot smaller. I've done it that way for the simple reason that it's a lot easier to handle, and when you put them together, most people are not going to be able to tell the difference. Unless you were doing a competition, then you would have to do the orchid the right way. So... I'm not going to even show you how to do that because uh, we've already done them in my previous videos. If you go back to the uh, Symbidium Orchid then uh, it shows you how to make that. You're just doing it a lot smaller. So you just need a very tiny piece of paste to be able to do that. If you were going to measure it on the uh, measuring show, uh, guide that I've shown you before, I would say that it probably needs to be about a size 3, no bigger than that. And then thin it down underneath like we've done with a lot of other things. It's like an upside down um, rose cone or whatever. We do do these cones quite a lot. So rather than keep doing it over and over again. I'm going to leave that at that with that one. So I've got some paste here. Again like I've done with quite a lot of the flowers. I'm using the plain paste on its own. It's getting a bit discoloured this because it has been uh, worked quite a bit but uh, you tend to find when they dry they do dry fairly white anyway. I've got a little bit of hard paste in there. If you get a bit of hard paste like that, that's a piece that's gone dry, don't waste it. Get it on your board, get your rolling pin on and roll it out like that and that brings it back to where it should be. We don't waste anything if we can avoid doing it. Things are too expensive to keep having to throw things away. Oops. Picking my pot. Picking my uh, kitchen roll up there. So if we roll that out, you don't want to go too thin with it. Now the first thing you need to do is to make the, uh, the throat. So I'll cut that out and rather than keep rolling paste out, I'm just going to leave that on there because I'm going to come back to that in a minute. So if I just move those orchids out of the way that I've already made. And get your pad and your ball tool. and thin round your edges like that now to use this veiner here because it's quite an awkward shape what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this veiner to vein it and then I'm also going to use this as a former for the throat to dry so what you need to do is get this into your former and just gently position it so you've got everything straight so your little 
uh, nodule piece goes down into the center part there and your wings go over the side so basically you're just getting it into shape because of the shape of this and then pop the top on press down and press in with this one so there it is I'm just going to ease that out of the vein for so that I can glue it onto the onto the throw part I just want to loosen it so that when I put it back into form it it's not going to stick in the but it's already shaped your throat already so to glue this together what you need to do is to glue down the center and then a little bit on the sides here like that then if you get your column with the hollowed out piece face down into there like that and then gently you know, it's a bit of a fiddly job is this especially when you've got big fingers like me hold it down like that and then grab it on our, on the sides just to bring it round onto that that one's just once oops and I think I've done my soft one there instead of the dried one. I have picked the wrong one up there. So I've already got one dry somewhere. What have I done with it? There. Don't do like I did. Don't forget to put some glue on your wire when you do this uh, centre part because it's too small to get a hook into it. There we are. <clears throat> bring that round the back like that and then what you do then is if you get that part of the vein and just drop it back into there then you can open out your sides of your throat and then put it on something so it's up in the air three so wires hanging down because if you can't put your wire in it flop down if you put it into anything else so uh, basically you need to support it so if you find something that you can put it on the edge of a board that's raised up or anything like that would do right next part that cutter cut out one of those and then you need to cut out the two side petals Take away your excess, we'll put that back in the bag. Always keep your paste tightly covered up, airtight, so that it doesn't dry out. Right, now then, back onto your pad. And with the medium end of your ball tool, just go around and thin your edges off. one haven't I uh, missed one I always talk to myself when uh, when I'm doing things I do this when there's nobody about and I'm not on camera or anything like that the only person that hears me is my cat right so back onto your board now I want the two burners I'm going to use that one which that's the top for it and then I'm going to use this thin side one I'm going to do that first because this is the one that is the fiddly one of the two so 
if you pop your top petal into that and position it into place into the shape and then put your top on give it a press take that off turn it round and do the same with the next petal then turn it round and do the other side any of you ladies that are watching might find this a bit easier because you've got you haven't got uh, chubby fingers like me now like I said before if something goes wrong I don't cover it up now I have got a bit of a tear there in the um, in the petal which has been caused by uh, putting pressure on the venus so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut that off and I'm going to reposition that so I'm just going to put a bit of glue in here and reposition it you only need a tiny little bit of overlap and glue that back on that's not going to be seen anyway because the that's going to go around the um, column so rather than throwing it away and doing it again and getting really frustrated thinking oh that's gone wrong and whatever don't throw it away and then we'll get the side petals into this verna and we'll do those that's one and the other one Now then, the next best, the next thing to do is to get this round your throat. So, have a former ready. This is the former that I'm using for doing these. If you haven't got a former, then try and make one with some foil or something like that. Something that's going to be stiff, and you need something at hand, like your um, kitchen roll or anything like that, to pop it on top of, so that the wide angles down in the middle to support the whole flower when you come to do it uh, so I've got a dried throat here that's already done that's the dried one make sure I've got the right one this time and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the glue on the base of the throat this time to attach it rather than putting it on the petal and what you need to do is to get that on your hand lay your throat on like that and then bring your petals up round the back like that if you can see that so they go around there like that this is going to fold back like that when I get it in the vena so we just need to attach that to the back of the throat and then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to pop this into the vena very carefully make sure you've got a hole in the bottom to do this and just pop that in like that now that's twisted round so that wants to be that way Ooh. and I've just broken a petal off see what I mean about things going wrong doesn't matter how long you've been doing it things can go wrong even for professionals so I'm not going to stop, I'm going to leave that because I have got some already made. So I'm just going to show you how to assemble the other parts of the orchid. So we just need a little bit of glue down there and down there. And then you pop your petal in down there, gently. And pop that petal in down that side, like that. And then get your little palette knife and then just make sure that that's attached. Now if I had time to show you I could repair that rather than because it's a clean break what you can do is mix together some um, some of the paste that you've used in whatever colour it is that you've used and mix it with some of your glue 
and then attach it with that and if you've got it in a formal like this you can leave it there until it dries and then once it's dried then you can take it out and it'll be a strong joint on it then so i mean it was a clean break so that would actually join together quite easily but i'm not going to do it just now uh, because i want to get onto the uh, coloring part of the flower now i'm gonna have to use this because i already started my video once and forgot to switch on my microphone so i've had to do it all again so there are some things that i've actually used that i wouldn't have done so i'm just pop that on top of there so that's nice and supported there so we just get rid of those veiners out of the way so we finish with those on the cutters so i'm going to bring that back in so as you can see i've got i'm just going to move my camera up a bit so you can see what i'm doing here right so the color that i'm using for it is mother of pearl from edible art Where's my brush gone? There it is. So I'm just going to get some of the Mother of Pearl on my brush. And then if you just brush gently all over the flower, and that includes the throat and everything else. As I say, normally I'd let this dry before I did this, but because I've already coloured one that was dry without switching my sound on, it's left me in a bit of a quandary because I didn't have another spare one to do. <clears throat> but you've seen me do all this sort of thing before in all my other videos with all flowers. It's all basically the same. What I would normally do is, because when that's dry, is turn it over and give it a little bit of a... Uh, a waft on the back with the um, with the pearl on the back as well just to finish it off uh, you could if you wanted to put a little bit of yellow down in the center I'm not going to do on that and then the other thing that you could do is as I've done on the back of these I've just added a little bit of green after I've put the uh, pearl on the back so very gently just on the back with your with your pearl and then the green that I've got here which the green that I've used is where's it gone I think it's spring green is this that I've used for this which is this colour it's called spring green from edible art I know I keep pushing their colours but they're the colours that I'm using if you haven't got these colours then try and find something that is compatible from another make but if you're in the UK it's a UK company I don't know whether they ship elsewhere or not they might do because they're very good and they've got a massive range so it's edible art world of colour if you need to go and have a look at that um, and then also then then you've got your buds as well now the buds are sort of basically like a sort of a boat shape now that's one that's not dry yet as well so I'm going to come back onto that one in a minute I need a little bit more paste to finish this off and the way that you make these a bit of wire I'm only using very thin wires for this I think this is about um, a 28 is this which is the size I normally use for leaves now I start off with a ball of paste roll it into a sausage like that got a bit of green on there as well that I've picked up because I've just been handling the green and then put your wire in at an angle like that so it comes out if you can see how I've gone through like that and then what you need to do then is you need to put a bit of a hook on the top of your wire and pull that down into your paste just make that a bit that's it it's better like that and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to thin both ends of the sausage of paste 
not necessarily to a point but sort of an elongate it just pull it out a bit so that I can elongate that a bit better like that pull your paste over the over the wire so it doesn't come out just to cover it over like that and then if you just bring the ends of your paste up like a bit like Aladdin's lamp is the way to describe it very similar sort of shape so if you think about how they do Aladdin's lamp then that's what you want to do with this okay like that put that to dry then when it's dry starting off with the smallest ones you want a very light shade of the green I've already done one here that's the smallest size and with the other ones that have, as they're coming down then just put the green underneath Blending from the base. I'm just have to be careful with this because I don't want to pull it off the wire because it's still a bit soft is this one. And then I've gone over the top with the pearl. Now if you're doing a coloured one, a pink one or a, a lilac coloured one or whatever, then you'd use whatever colour you're using on your on your orchid. You can get more creative with the colours so you, it depends on which ones you've chosen but I always start off with white paste when I'm doing things like this because you've got lighter areas and darker areas and because dusting powder you've a lot more control over you're not putting a block colour into it um, you can do the shading a lot better with the powders rather than painting it or anything like that so uh, that's the why I, why I do it that way when you've done all that then you need some light green tape, Nile green, I've got some already cut here, mix it up with some cotton from my last video, I should have put that away. And then what I'm going to do now is get all the buds that I've done. Look at them all that. Then if you just get them into size Ah, there it is. I thought I had a smaller one. Small one. Slightly bigger. Slightly bigger. Bigger. And bigger. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I've got odd numbers there. Didn't realise I'd done that. That was an accident, by the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt my camera up a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing. Because whenever I'm wiring, I tend to go come this way. So... Um, start off with the first one I'm just going to start the tape off on the bud lower down than the actual bud because you can break things if you don't start low enough down and then just push it up underneath the bud then you can put in your next one Pull that wire down. I'll leave a little bit of wire showing on this. I can't remember how much he's showing because, as I said, with the not having the orchids in flower at the moment. Um, oh, we have. We need more wire showing. I've just looked at a book that I've got uh, with Alan Dunn's instructions in his and he's left a bit of wire on them so we'll do what he's done because he does study them which I would normally do if they were in flower at the moment but as I say they're not in flower so I can't what you could do as well is cover the uh, wires with the Nile green tape before you do this I haven't done it but if I was doing as I say competition work I would do And then I'm just going to tape down now. 
see what you would normally do I'm just going to do it with these with the orchids is to cover the wires with some of this now green tape first of all there is a good reason for doing this because if you've watched my other videos you'll know that I've said repeated this many a time when you're assembling your flowers and leaves and things like that if you tape down the wires in between your wires tend to stay in place better because they've got something to grip onto because stem text is quite sticky so I'm just going to cover these orchids with a bit of tape first before I uh, assemble the whole lot together and I didn't get that one started did I? just don't forget to stretch your tape and find out which is your sticky side and I'm using it on the wrong side there nip it in and then tape down and then push that up underneath your flower that's just so you don't break any petals off when you're doing it I know one of these I've broken a little bit of uh, petal off but once you've got it all done you can always repair things if uh, if you've done that the way that I explained with the uh, orchid that I've just put together I'm just going to cut some more tape now because I've used most of my tape there with my little gadget wherever I've put it there it is if you haven't got one of these get one find one of your sugar craft stockists that stocks uh, gem products and uh, cutters and uh, tools and things like that uh, it's a gem I haven't seen anybody else with this uh, they did used to actually sell it at one of the wholesale florists that I used to go to as well but they don't seem to have them in stock now because florists could use them if they were because a lot of the things that we do in sugar craft when you're making flowers are the same way as a, a florist would do it putting your sprays together and everything else that you do just need to get that started down here you can't put your finger in because these blades are sharp so you need to find something to uh, get hold of that there we are, those scissors will do to pull that tape down there we are this is what, what I would class as being one of my invaluable tools to use because all you do is just pull it through like that and when your blades get blunt they're just normal razor blades that are in it so they're easy to replace right here's the other end that's it so i'm going to start off again underneath my buds a little bit further down like that and put in my first orchid now what you've got to be careful of here is that you get your orchids the right way around because i once entered a competition and i got them marked down because i got my dendrobium orchids in oops as they put it upside down they looked all right to me but apparently they were upside down so just be careful of that if you want to put another wire in you can do and what we're going to do is you want your buds to go to one side and your then your flowers to another that's the right way around put that in there like that this is the difficulty when you're doing things like this you need to get everything really tight so they don't move around because if you don't when you when you haven't got a lot of wire on show like this it is a lot easier i'm just going to come back up and just tighten that one up that's it a bit better come back down again and then put another one in at the other side Pull 
lot down. Sometimes when I put sprays together I do use full width tape because it's a lot firmer. You need to really get, really get it tight when you're doing this so they don't move around because obviously if they're going to move around there's more chance of breaking petals off. Just keep going. There we are. Now you make sprigs of these up, you can put them in with other flowers like roses and things like that. I think I did um, roses and gerberas when I did a, a spray for a competition with these. Now that wants to go over that way and this one wants to come round the other side. That way. And then you can pull your buds out. Oops, knocked a petal off. There we are. This is where you need to be careful. But that can be put back on again because it goes down in the bottom there. So I'm just going to move those out of the way and lay this down so that you can see these on my board. Like that. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video and me making mistakes as well. Like I say, I don't cut them out. So uh, if there is if there is a mistake made, then I've got a better chance of showing you how to put it right, like I did when that petal came off on the uh, on that other one. But this this petal that's just fallen off here, I can glue that back on um, after I've finished this. So that's just going to go back into into there wherever it's gone. And. Uh, any comments that you've got that you've got about my videos or anything like you'd like to ask me or if any suggestions for anything you'd like to see me do put them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and don't forget to subscribe to the channel it's free uh, the more subscribers that, that we have the better it is for people on YouTube so uh, um, I hope you will and um, give us a like as well if you like what I've done so look forward to seeing you in the next video. Uh, take care and stay safe. Bye.